What's up, nerds? Welcome back to another weekly Math Hammer. This week, we are looking at two concepts in statistics and probability, the law of large numbers and the probability distribution. So these are really important things for people to get the general concept of. And the actual mathematics behind these, I think, is way too technical for me to actually get into in a Math Hammer video. But I think the concepts are really fairly easy to get across. So I wanted to just kind of run through these ideas because it's really like make or break for some units, certain models. Um, and I think it's something that people really need to understand in order to have, well, in order to set proper expectations for the outcomes of things. Because simply looking at your averages on what to expect for unit output, for damage output, it's not necessarily going to give you the same sort of result when you actually look at what the odds of individual outcomes are. So let's just take a look at the definitions of these real quick to get a better understanding of what's going on here. So the law of large numbers is a concept in probability theory and it's a theorem that describes the result of performing the same experiment a large number of times. According to the law, the average of the results obtained from a large number of trials should be close to the expected value and will tend to become closer as more trials are performed. The law of large numbers is important because it guarantees stable long-term results for the averages of some random events. In other words, if you flip a coin one time, it could be heads or tails, 50-50 odds. If you roll it, or I'm sorry, if you flip a coin 10 times, you should expect to get five heads and five tails. Odds are that's probably not actually what's going to happen because 10's not a very big number. That 50-50 outcome is going to be much closer to your reality if you roll 100 dice, even closer if you roll 1,000 dice, 10,000, and so on. As you increase the number of occurrences of something, you get closer to the true average with your outcomes. And the, the way we apply this to Warhammer is really the more dice you get to roll, the more consistent your outcome's going to be. Probability distribution is the way to actually like graphically illustrate what your odds of things occurring are. So in probability and uh, theory and statistics, uh, probability distribution is a mathematical function that provides the probabilities of occurrences of different possible outcomes in an experiment. In more technical terms, the probability distribution is a description of a random phenomenon in terms and the probabilities of events. So this is, you know, if you roll 10 dice, what are your odds of 1, what are your odds of 2, what are your odds of 3, and so on, successes. So how does this really apply to Warhammer? Um, it's really important to note here that Although mathematically, in terms of like getting to an average, having uh, a damage characteristic of three is the same as having an attack characteristic of three, and you know the, the opposite being one. So a damage characteristic of three with one attack, or an attack characteristic of three with a damage characteristic of one, those come out to the same average if you have the same hit and wound profile. However, your actual results are going to be dramatically different. If you have three attacks, you could get one damage through, two, or three. If you have 
a damage characteristic of three, your only options are zero or three. And you're going to be very likely to get that zero and not very likely to get the three. With the attacks characteristic of three, you're going to be much more consistently getting something through every time. And the probability distribution is really just like graphing this to understand what's going on. Um, so this is all about internalizing the expected results of die rolls. In general, if the more dice you throw, the more consistent your outcome is going to be. And the closer to your averages, uh, your actual output is going to be. Um, I, as I said, I don't want to actually get into the math of constructing a probability distribution. Um, I originally was going to throw some examples into this. Um, and even that was just like a lot of work. And I didn't want to like just kind of overdose on math for this. But thankfully, we can really, I think, just get it across conceptually in that, you know, although your damage characteristic and your tax characteristic, uh, the relationship between those two in terms of what your average damage output is, is really the same. They're really weighted the same. You're going to get very different outcomes, and also, by the way, we can also take this sort of to the next level and look at the difference between um, rolling a ton of attacks with really bad odds or very few attacks with really good odds. Um, so it would be like the difference between like Cunning Ruck versus Free Guild Handgunners. Um, the Free Guild Handgunners are going to be incredibly... Uh, incredibly accurate. They're going to be like hitting and wounding on twos most of the time. The problem is they're not going to throw as many attacks as the Cunning Rock is. The Cunning Rock just is, I think it's like fives and sixes or a fours and fives, something like that. It's something really bad, but it's throwing like buckets of dice. So its potential is higher, but its variability is all over the place because your odds are so bad in the middle. So this is um, conceptually interesting. Like this is also part of the reason why I would favor concussors over uh, fulminators, for example, um, because the concussors are, they're just going to be throwing that high damage more often. The fulminators are going to be charging in and doing a lot of damage once, and then in the future it's not as good um so the concussors are better for getting stuck in and being in multiple rounds of combat whereas with the fulminators you're really banking on getting lucky die rolls on your charge and then kind of sticking around and sticking it out afterward um so yeah this is just sort of a really high level look at this concept um part of me kind of wishes i could get a little bit deeper into this uh but as i said like the the actual mathematics of this are not simple um so i didn't want to really overburden people or frankly myself with lots and lots of mathy math and just really kind of talk about concepts so the really important thing to remember is a high damage characteristic looks crazy and impressive and you really want to do that thing. But you have to really look at the frequency of how often that happens. And I think there's real detriment to those units with a high damage characteristic and low attacks because they're just not they're going to do nothing way too often 
And if you are looking for more consistent results, it's probably going to be more likely that you're going to want to go with a higher number of die rolls with a lower amount of damage. So that's kind of it for now. Um, I just wanted to kind of hit like a 30,000 foot view of this. Um, feel free to throw questions down in the comments because I know this one was a little bit vague, um, but I didn't want to really overload people with math and just really kind of work on the broader concepts that are going on here. Anywho, I will talk to you all later.